Good morning, players, uh, parents, coaches, anybody else who may be listening. Uh, I just wanted to walk everybody through our return to play, play protocols before we start practice on uh, Monday, September 14th for the fall season this year. Uh, just some points of contact uh, that you're going to need for the upcoming fall season. Uh, the primary contact person this year is going to obviously be me. I'm the athletic supervisor here at Snyder High School. My name is Sean Fallon. Um, my contact information is right here, uh, my email, office phone, and mobile phone. Uh, our secondary contact is going to be our athletic trainer, Miss Michelin Ona. Uh, she can be emailed here, and here is her mobile. And our third point of contact is going to be our building principal, Miss Yvonne Waller. Okay, you contact her here at school or at the email address that you see right here. Uh, so just to get started, uh, I wanted to talk you through some of our pre-practice protocols, some of the things that we have plans to keep our kids safe. Uh, before we even start practice. Uh, before any student athlete begins practice, he or she is going to have to submit a new physical or a physical update form to us here at the school. Okay, that form is either going to come to me here or to their head coach. Uh, head coaches or other coaches who have been collecting forms, they are due to me by Tuesday, September 8th at Snyder by 4 o'clock. Okay, I'm here every day 8 to 4 and you can drop them off at any time. Uh, these packets include the COVID-19 questionnaire and the physician's clearance for each child. Uh, these forms are available if you need them. Uh, they're at the front door here at Snyder. The gate is open every day from 8 to 4 with the exception of Labor Day. And I can also email you these forms if you contact me at sfallon at jcboe.org. Uh, on the form at the COVID questionnaire section, if a student athlete answers yes to any of the questions, he or she has to be cleared by a doctor before they start. Okay. Student athletes are going to be eligible seven days after we receive the COVID-19 questionnaire. And the reason for that is that, you know, we screen the kids and that they are symptom free for seven days before they start to come on site for practice. Uh, if a student athlete has tested positive for COVID-19 antibodies, this is the same as testing positive for the virus. Okay, a positive COVID-19 test for antibodies means that the student athlete has had the virus at some point, even if he or she was asymptomatic and therefore unaware of it. Student athletes who have pre-existing medical conditions and or they are immunocompromised, uh, some examples of this are diabetes, asthma, autoimmune disorders, etc. Uh, these students have to provide us written clearance from a doctor before they are able to participate in sports. Uh, some of our practice and game day protocols. Okay, there's going to be a pre-screening for every athlete and coach and support staff member before every practice and every game. This process includes daily COVID-19 screening questionnaires and temperature checks. Uh, I, as the athletic supervisor, am going to designate a meeting point and time for each fall sport uh, and activity where they're going to be screened every day, and I'm going to share that with you later in this presentation. Screenings are going to be conducted by myself, the athletic trainer, head and assistant coaches. Student athletes and staff must answer the COVID-19 daily screening questionnaire and they also have to submit to a temperature check on site every day. If there is a yes answer on the form, students and staff are gonna be sent home and will not be permitted to return to practice until they've been seen by a doctor. The student's primary care physician will then determine if a COVID test is required. So, if a student or coach comes to Snyder or to their practice site and there is a yes answer on the screening form or if they have a temperature, they're going to be sent home and we are going to be asked that you're seen by a doctor, okay? We are not going to require a COVID test just for failing the daily screening, okay? But we are going to ask you to go see your doctor and your doctor is gonna be the one that decides if you need a COVID test or not. If there's only one coach at the practice site, then there's a, there has to be another district approved employee sent to conduct the screenings. Okay, we're not going to have just one coach at, at each site. We're going to have multiple coaches at every site screening the kids. Any school improve, approved employee can conduct the screenings. Uh, the screener does not have to be the same each day, although we do recommend it. Okay, we're not going to have coaches from other teams coming in contact with different sports to screen kids, you know, just for the sake of rotating the screeners. We're going to try to keep coaches that coach that sport screening the same kids every day to limit exposure. Uh, the screener is obviously always going to be wearing a face covering and the screener must first fill out a questionnaire and be screened themselves before they start checking the kids' temperatures. Uh, upon arrival, all coaches and players are going to be wearing a face covering. 
Players are going to be lined up six feet apart in their designated area, either at their practice site or here at Snyder, and they're going to wait for their daily screening. There's going to be no screening of student athletes until the coach has arrived and been cleared him or herself. Uh, the screener needs to document the temperature of each athlete every day, as well as answers to the questions provided. The student athletes and screeners must keep their face covered until the screening process is complete. Uh, players will be directed by their coaches when they are allowed to remove their masks. Uh, masks are, are going to be worn on our buses while traveling to and from practice. All bus windows must be fully open regardless of what the weather is outside. Uh, some game day symptom responses. Okay, so if a, if a child comes to us with symptoms at a practice or on a game day, this is going to be our response as an athletic department. Okay, if a student arrives on site and answers yes to any of the daily screening questions or has a temperature greater than or equal to 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, the screener is going to do the following. Okay, first of all, we're going to stop the entire process immediately. We're going to calmly and discreetly ask the student athlete to step away from the line into, his, uh, into a designated area uh, that's a safe distance away from his or her teammates. We're going to immediately call the student's parents and advise them that their child has been sent home from practice because he or she has failed their daily COVID screening. Okay, if the student is not permitted to walk home alone, he or she will be supervised by one of our coaches or myself until they are picked up by a parent. The athletic supervisor will be alerted immediately by a coach screening kids off-site, and I will follow up with the parent. Okay, the screening process for the remainder of the team can resume once the child that fails the, the daily screening is removed or moved away from the screening area. Uh, the follow-up. Okay, either the student or coach will not be permitted to return to athletic workouts, practice, or competition until they have received a physician's clearance and the note has been accepted by our trainer and our school nurse. The athletic supervisor will report a failed COVID-19 screening to the building principal, our athletic trainer, and our school nurse. If a coach at the workout has answered yes or has a temperature above the, the, the required number, then the workout will be canceled and the athletes will be returned home uh, either walking or by bus, unless there is, other, uh, there is an additional coach there that can supervise and conduct the practice. Uh, some of our in-practice procedures, okay? Coaches are going to wear face coverings at all times uh, in practice unless they're modeling a technique or a behavior that requires aerobic activity, okay? Student athletes will be required to wear face coverings at all times in practices unless they are performing aerobic activities, okay? So in simple terms, Unless you're doing something that requires you to run or move at full speed, you should be wearing a breathable face covering, okay? Water is going to be provided, but student athletes are required to bring their own personal use bottle. There is no sharing of these bottles, uh, and bottles may be refilled at any time using the water coolers that we will provide. Uh, players may use practice site restrooms, but it's always one at a time. Uh, all equipment will be sanitized after each workout and after each game. Weight training activities um, are going to be conducted outdoors. We are not using the weight room inside here at Snyder as of right now. Uh, access to workouts are going to be limited to the athletes, the coaches, and either myself or the trainer. Okay, there's going to be no parents uh, at practices watching. If you do, you'll be watching from the stands. There's going to be no one else on the field with our kids except for players, coaches, the trainer, or myself. Uh, all workouts are going to comply with the NJSIAA heat acclimatization policy as we do every summer. Uh, this policy is designed to gradually increase students exposure to practice in hot temperatures and like every other summer uh, we will be following those protocols. Uh, players and coaches should not engage in, in, in congregating in large groups. Okay, Team huddles, pre and post practice discussions should occur with face coverings on. Uh, some information about the face coverings, okay? Students and staff who do not arrive at workouts with a mask will, be not permit, will not be permitted to enter. Acceptable masks include surgical masks, cloth masks with ear loops, and gator type cloth masks, okay? We are encouraging kids to purchase a gator mask. Uh, it's very easy to pull up and down over the child's face, and unlike the other types of masks that you wrap around your ears, the gator mask remains around your neck at all times and it can't be lost and kids can access it right away 
uh, because it remains around your neck for the entire practice. Okay, so those are the ones that we're encouraging. Student athletes who are engaged in high intensity aerobic activity like running, sprinting, etc., do not need to wear their mask during the period of activity. Okay, so we're not going to be asking kids that are running around full speed wearing football equipment to be wearing masks. We're going to pull the masks up when the kids are at a rest period or are in between drills or are not running. Okay? Student athletes who are not engaged in high intensity activities like sitting on the bench, reviewing plays, watching videos, waiting in line, you know, that's where we're going to put the masks on. Coaches, screeners, and district personnel must wear face coverings at all time uh, unless they are demonstrating or running with their players like a cross country coach would, etc. Okay? Student athletes, coaches, and district personnel are going to provide their own face coverings. Uh, we do have some surgical masks that were given to us, but those are going to be used in an emergency as needed basis. Okay? If we have kids that just don't have access to a mask or, or can't get one for some reason, we will provide them. Okay? Um, obviously, we're not going to be sharing face coverings, and student athletes are going to be responsible for maintaining and cleaning their own masks. Okay, some of our grouping and social distancing guidelines, student athletes are not going to be congregating in large groups unless they are required to do so by their sport. Okay, an example of this would be students huddling up in football before they run a play, um, you know, soccer kids that are congregating around their coach during a timeout or a stoppage in play or something like that. Um, you know, these are, these are small gatherings that are required by sport and that we will allow. Okay, the social distancing of at least six feet Will, is going to be maintained between student athletes and staff when possible, including within student athlete groupings. Okay, the exception to this rule is when teams are executing live plays or activities in practice or in games. Okay, so even during practices when we have groups of kids working together, we are still going to try our best to maintain a six feet social distance, um, you know, even inside drills in practice. One coach is going to be allowed to supervise multiple groups of kids as long as face coverings and proper distancing is being maintained at all times. Um, there aren't going to be any celebratory contact this year. We're going to try to limit high fives, fist bumps, hugging, huddles, etc. Um, student athletes who socialize with friends outside of practice should be mindful of social distancing and wearing a mask at all times. Um, no house parties. Okay, this is a theme that we're going we're to address later specifically, but we have to encourage our kids to stay away from large gatherings. Okay, one outbreak is going to cancel the whole season. Okay, so I know you've heard about large colleges and, and high schools who have had outbreaks. Um, you know, in our case, if one kid on a team ends up getting COVID, there's a really good chance that it's going to shut down your whole season. Okay, so we have to be mindful of that. The kids need to know that, and you need to reinforce that every day. Uh, some of our equipment, locker room, and hygiene. Okay, these are some of the specifics on how we're going to try to keep our kids safe. Okay, sports equipment is not going to be shared at any time unless our sport requires the use of one ball, like football, soccer, or tennis. Uh, helmets and shoulder pads for football, shin guards, and soccer, you know, these are examples of equipment that should never be shared under any circumstance. Uh, all sports equipment and touch points, uh, things like balls, benches, agility cones, ladders, clipboards, etc., must be cleaned and, cleaned and disinfected by the coaches after every workout with cleaners that we are going to provide to you. Student athletes are not gonna have access to our locker rooms at this point or the use of our weight room inside of Snyder. Okay, there will be some instances where uh, I believe football in particular is gonna be doing some, some weight training, but that's gonna be done outside Snyder uh, after our coaches have brought the equipment outside. Uh, restrooms are obviously gonna be available for use for our kids at any time that they need them, but they're gonna be used one student at a time and restrooms will be cleaned and disinfected regularly, which means daily, by our coaches uh, and um, maintenance staff at the practice sites and here at school every day. Uh, students and staff should make every effort to wash their hands as much as possible, including before and after practice. Hand sanitizer will be provided. Okay, so each coach will be given masks, hand sanitizer, and a thermometer uh, and that's going to be part of your PPE that you're going to use on a daily basis, basis at your practice sites. Uh, student athletes are going to wear their workout gear to the workout and return home with the same clothes. We're going to try to encourage kids not to change clothes. Um, you know, if, if we can keep their clothes on their backs, 
that means that we won't have sweaty clothing laying around buses or practice sites or, or wherever the kids congregate and we cut down the chance of infection. Okay, there's gonna be no spitting, chewing seeds or gum during workouts. And a special note, um, we are limited with access to the building, okay, but we have asked for permission for student athletes with sports related injuries that they sustain in practice or games to be permitted in our building in groups of two or three so that they can be medically treated by, by our trainer. Okay, it's, it's physically impossible for us to bring our trainer's equipment out onto the street. Okay, the tables, the whirlpools, you know, the ice machine, the medical supplies, etc. That stuff has to remain housed in our trainer's office and we are trying to get our kids to be able to come in safely in groups of two or three to be treated medically by our trainer as needed. Okay, this is going to be done in consultation with, uh, you know, myself as the athletic supervisor and with our building principal, Miss Yvonne Waller. Uh, our response to a positive COVID-19 test. Okay, so this is what we're going to do if one of our student athletes, coaches, or support staff tests positive for the coronavirus. Okay, if a member, which means player or coach of any team is diagnosed, participation in that sport is going to cease immediately for all student athletes and staff members who have been in contact with the diagnosed individual. So in other words, if a player on the football team tests positive for COVID, the entire football team will cease activity from that day until everyone's been cleared. Okay, all players and coaches will, will be referred to the Jersey City Health Department's free Jersey City COVID testing location or to their private doctor for a COVID-19 test and the beginning of the contact tracing process. Okay, so th this is where it becomes simple. Every day in Jersey City, there is one location that is open from eight to four that is free to any Jersey City resident to get a free COVID test. Okay, so if a child, um, you know, is, believes that they have the COVID, you know, that they've been exposed to COVID, excuse me, um, you know, they fail a daily screening, we're gonna refer them to their primary care doctor. Okay, their primary care doctor will then decide if they, that test is warranted, okay? The free testing location will be available or the child's private doctor may be able to provide the COVID-19 test, okay? We are encouraging use of the free facility because with the free Jersey City Health Department testing also comes the contact tracing that the city will be responsible for and will be done for free. Any student or coach who tests positive should follow the CDC and New Jersey Department of Health guidelines and their doctor's orders along with remaining quarantines for 72 hours after the COVID symptoms have been resolved, okay? So even after someone diagnosed with COVID-19 is symptom free, we ask that you remain symptom free for 72 hours before you come back to us with your doctor's note and start to get yourself you know, ready to play again. Uh, the student or coach must be cleared by a doctor obviously before they return to workouts and the athletic supervisor must be provided with a copy of the doctor's note saying that the child is free of COVID um, you know, before the child is allowed to participate again. Uh, we're going to make it our priority to maintain the student's confidentiality. Okay, the communication is going to be distributed to all relevant participants, including district administration. So if one of our student athletes um, comes back to us with a positive diagnosis, you know, obviously that information has to be shared with certain individuals that have been, you know, in contact with that child. Uh, obviously, we're not going to use the child's name, but we have to contact the other parents of the other kids on the team to let them know that their child has been exposed to a teammate uh, that has tested positive for the coronavirus. Uh, obviously, I'll be in contact with parents if this happens, and a letter outlining these protocols is going to be distributed to each player and coach to be brought home and signed by parents before we start practice. Uh, anyone who is or has been in close contact with an individual who tests positive for COVID at home should be tested. Okay, so this doesn't just go for, for kids that are exposed at practice. Okay, any, any student athlete who knows or has a family member at home that they've been in contact with um, that has COVID-19, you know, they need to report that back to us immediately. Uh, here's our fall practice sites. Okay, so this is where our kids are going to be on a daily basis. Uh, football is going to be at Caven Point from 3 to 7 p.m. They are not traveling there on a bus, so the kids are going to meet their coaches at Caven Point at 3 o'clock, and the screening process will begin there. 
Okay, the coach contact for football is Matt Gallo, and the alternate practice site for football is Berry Lane Field. Okay, soccer also will be at Caven Point on the soccer turf from 3 to 7. Soccer will be traveling on the bus. Their contact person is Kenny Santos, the head coach, and their alternate practice site is at Lincoln Park. Uh, Cross-country track, both boys and girls, will be at Lincoln Park from 3 to 7. Uh, we are going to alternate busing for the girls and boys track team. Okay, so for the first week, the girls will travel on the bus. The boys will meet at, at uh, Lincoln Park. The student athletes that are meeting at the practice sites like Caven Point and Lincoln Park will be screened there by their coaches and by our trainer. Okay, the contacts for, for cross country track is Isaiah Thomas for the boys, Robert Arena for the girls. Their alternate practice location is Bayonne Park. Uh, girls tennis, they will also practice at Lincoln Park from 3 to 7 p.m. They will be traveling on a bus that will meet here at Snyder High School. Their contact is Oscar Mendez, the head girls coach, and their alternate practice site is Bayonne Park. Uh, the cheerleaders will meet at Caven Point uh, or Otto Autobahn Park uh, down the block from school. They will not be traveling on a bus, and their coach contacts are Jacqueline Torres and Tammy Laval. Our screening sites. Okay, so each team is going to be screened in a different location. Okay, the football team is going to be screened directly at Caven Point. We will have three points of contact to screen them there. Coach Matt Gallo, uh, Coach Paul Giorgio, and Coach Gary Zielinski will be screened first by me or at their school location, and then they will proceed, proceed to Caven Point to meet the kids at 3 o'clock to screen the team there. Okay, soccer is going to be screened here at Snyder High School beginning at 3 o'clock by myself and our trainer. They will line up six feet apart at the main entrance. Uh, Cross-country track will meet at Lincoln Park for the boys only. They will be screened by coaches Isaiah Thomas and Robert Arena. Um, that'll happen between 3 and 3.30 and p.m. every day at Lincoln Park. The girls cross-country team will report to Snyder. Okay, we're going to line them up at exit 2. Um, I will screen them along with Miss Ona. After they are screened, they will be placed on a bus and they will be brought to Lincoln Park for practice. Okay, the girls tennis team will meet here at Snyder and we will line them up at exit three. Okay, they will be screened between three and 3.30 p.m. by myself, uh, by Coach Mendez and by Henry Greenfield, our assistant coach. And once the screening is complete, they will get on their bus and they will go to Lincoln Park for practice. Uh, cheer will also be screened here at Snyder. They will be screened between 3 and 3.30 p.m. by myself, our trainer, and Miss Tammy Laval, and they will proceed to practice from Snyder after their screening is complete. Okay, so to summarize, um, in district teachers, you do not have to come to Snyder for a screening at 3 o'clock. You are going to be screened at your school location in the morning, and you don't need to be screened twice. Okay, you're going to report directly to your practice location. Out of district coaches have to report to me here at Snyder High School every day at 2.45 to be screened, okay? Regardless of whether you're a head or assistant coach, if you are not a district employee who is reporting to a school to be screened every morning, you need to be screened by me at 2.45 before you come in contact with your players for screenings at 3 o'clock. Um, this obviously, this procedure is not going to be easy. This is something that's new to all of us and, and, and might be difficult at first. Um, but the alternative to this is to not offer sports, um, and that's an alternative that we can't choose. Okay, our kids at Snyder especially, you know, they need to be with us for three hours a day. You know, and, and that goes beyond sports, and that's for obvious reasons. Okay, the kids and the coaches are going to learn how to, how to do this process, and they're going to adapt. Okay, for the first couple of days it's going to be tough, but after a few days, you know, I, I honestly believe that we're going to be running through this in just a few minutes and we're going to be back to practice and playing as, as we, we would in any other you know, instance. Um, you need to remind kids every day that one positive test has the potential to cancel an entire season, not just for your sport, for the entire, sport, the, the entire fall sports season. Okay, My supervisor, Mr. Frank Dooley, uh, he was on a conference call with, with other county superintendents uh, earlier this week, and you know, there was legitimate discussion of canceling an entire fall sports season just for one kid testing positive, okay? That's how serious this is. We all need to be honest about symptoms and not feeling well, 
okay? In sports especially, you know, we have a culture where we fight through injuries, we fight through being sick, we come to work when we're not feeling so good, you know, for the sake of the kids. And, you know, this is not the time to do that. If you're not feeling well at all, if you have a temperature, you know, if something feels off, you know, this is not the time to fight through it for the sake of the team. You need to be honest about it. You need to answer the questions on the daily screening honestly. And if you have a temperature, you need to be ready to go home and relax for a few days and see your doctor before you come back to us. Okay? Um, one of the myths that we need to dispel is that young, healthy people are not getting COVID. Okay? This is a complete myth. Our kids need to know that kids their age are getting sick from, from COVID-19 and in some rare cases dying from it. Okay? Kids need to know that. They, they can't walk around believing that they're young and they're healthy and they're, they're immune because that's just not the case. Okay? They need to take it seriously. Um, you know, I know that our COVID numbers here in New Jersey are very low. They're actually probably the best in America right now. But we can't let that get us into a false sense of security. Okay? We need to be conscious of this every day. And our kids need to understand that they can catch this at any point, and it could cost them their whole season. Uh, we can't eliminate the risk, but we can greatly limit it by using the resources that we have available. Okay? We're going to have hand sanitizer at practice. We're going to have kids wearing masks. We're going to social distance. And if we can do this effectively every day, we can limit the risk greatly. Okay? We need to focus on this every day, and we need, we need to reinforce it at every practice. Okay? Lastly, we have to reinforce the large gathering and the house party theme every day. Okay, every large sports team COVID outbreak from high schools here in New Jersey all the way up to major colleges like Notre Dame, Ohio State, Clemson, they all have one thing in common. Okay, the kids caught it at a large gathering or a house party that has poor ventilation. Okay, one bad decision, one house party where there's 50 kids trapped in a, in a small apartment, you know, not wearing masks, one bad decision like that has the potential to cancel all five of our sports and have an effect on hundreds of people, okay? You have to get on the kids every day about avoiding these large gatherings, okay? So that's all I have for you right now. Um, we were going to meet in person as an entire fall sports coaching staff, but I was told that we are not allowed to bring large groups in the building. Um, next week, starting on Tuesday, September, uh, September 8th, I'm going to be bringing coaches in individually with their assistants to go over specific protocols for your sport and to give you all the documentation that you need, um, you know, obviously to screen the kids. And at that time, I'm going to need you to give me back all of the physicals and updates that you have because the ones that we have back, those are the only kids that are participating on September 14th. Okay. So any questions that you have for me, please call me or email. I'm available every day, eight to four. Um, and if you need me after hours, you can always call me on my cell. Okay? Thank you very much for your time, and uh, I look forward to getting started with everyone next week. Thank you.